Hey everybody, just a very small note before we begin this episode. Our guest Justin has shared with us an ebook about in house banking that complements this episode. It is not mandatory at all, you can listen to the episode and still get everything. As you will see, some in house banking tasks can actually be outsourced, and treasury outsourcing is exactly what this episode is about. Head to corporate treasury 101.com, head to the article section, and look for the one with Justin to download the ebook for free. The link is, of course, in the description. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Corporate Treasury 101 podcast. In today's episode, we discuss treasury outsourcing with Justin Callaghan from FTI Treasury. Justin has nearly 30 years of experience of working in the corporate treasury world. For the last 17 years, Justin has been working with FTI Treasury, overseeing the provision of treasury outsourcing services to a wide range of multinational organizations. FTI Treasury is a Dublin-based specialist treasury company focused on providing treasury outsourcing solutions to multinational companies. In the episode of today, expect to learn what is treasury outsourcing and its primary objectives, which treasury functions are commonly outsourced and why, what is the typical company's profile that seeks to outsource treasury functions, how do companies ensure control and oversight when outsourcing treasury tasks, and like always, much, much more. Treasury outsourcing, when done right, has interesting intersections with treasury consulting, which made for a very interesting conversation with Justin, who has a tremendous amount of knowledge in the field and managed to answer very well some of our toughest questions. We hope you will enjoy the episode. If that is the case, and when you're thinking about how you found our podcast, chances are that it was through word of mouth, social media, or a recommendation from your favorite podcast platform. And this is our only request to you. The best way you can support the podcast is to head to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Corporate Treasury 101. That will mean the world to us and help more people learn about treasury. On another other note, this episode is brought to you by Automation Boutique. Automation Boutique is empowering treasury, finance, and risk management with tailored automation solution. They use robotic process automation, RPA, AI, APIs, and Power Query to create automations that can work with your existing systems. We partnered with Automation Boutique as we really like their approach to innovation and how they help the industry. For this partnership, they came up with an AI-powered automation self-scan that can help you find out if a business process is suitable for automation and how to best get started. It is totally free non-intrusive and only takes about 15 minutes. What's great is that the report you will get from the scan helps you determine if the benefits of the automation outweigh the costs. If you want to have a look, head to the link in the description or to automationboutique.com slash corporate treasury 101. And with all that being said, please welcome Justine Callaghan. Justin, thank you so much for coming on the show. Great to have you on Corporate Treasury 101. Well, thank you very much for inviting me on. I'm looking forward to this chat, guys. Um, uh, it's great to see and be talking to you in person. I've, I've looked at all your other previous podcasts and they're very interesting. It's uh, great to see Corporate Treasury being pushed to the forefront in a kind of interesting and new and innovative way. So well done, guys. Mm, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Very good. So you're going to talk with us about Treasury outsourcing. Can you tell us what Treasury outsourcing is, please? Right. So I hope you weren't hoping for a, a kind of a one-line answer to that, guys. Um, uh, so, Not at all. Um, uh, treasury outsourcing has really changed a lot uh, over the years. Um, I've been involved in this business in one way or another for the goods of 30 years. Um, and uh, the evolution of it has been really, uh, really interesting. So like in its simplest form, treasury outsourcing, as with any outsourcing, is kind of the outsourcing of a specific treasury process to a third party for operational management. That's very simple. That's what you'd expect, I guess, with, with outsourcing. Uh, however, the view on what the sort of processes might be and how to derive the best results from treasury outsourcing has changed kind of dramatically. Um, since the concept was uh, first knocked around. So like when, when I when I look at this, I sort of look at the, the evolution of treasury outsourcing over kind of three 
kind of pretty distinct phases, uh, even though they all kind of merge into each other. Uh, and it's probably over the last maybe 25 to 30 years that these stages have sort of um, sort of developed. So initially, when the concept of treasury outsourcing kind of became popular and was starting to be discussed, particularly in the uh, in the corporate environment, uh, it was probably in around the mid 1990s. Uh, and the main discussion back then was about the, the kind of full outsourcing of a corporate treasury function. Um, so, so in theory. Uh, uh, the concept was that a CFO would almost abdicate responsibility for treasury activities um, to a third party. That's a big decision, big risk, um, <laughs> and a brave man. Um, uh, I remember at that time I was working for a FTSE 100 uh, multinational in the in, in the kind of communication sector, uh, and it was a I would say it had a mid-sized um, corporate treasury team, about maybe ten to fifteen people, um, and I remember we were all we were all gathered together in a room. Uh, in London to discuss the strategic future um, of the uh, of, of the treasury function of that organisation, and and front and central uh, at that stage on that agenda was the concept of outsourcing um, uh, outsourcing the treasury, uh, and we did a very deep dive into all of the things that a treasury function does, um, and it quickly became very apparent that about you know sixty percent of them are not outsourceable. <laughs> you know, uh, and 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 in many ways they are the ones that maybe take less time, but take much more strategic vision uh, and much more business alignment uh, that can't be outsourced. So there are, there are there are certain things that just aren't suitable. Um, and if you think about it, simple things like you know uh, relationship management with funders, uh, understanding the internal culture of the organisation, uh, managing some internal um, uh, relationships in terms of you. Know, Tax, uh, corporate acquisitions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, they're, they're not really things uh, that lend themselves to the uh, to the out, to the outsource world. So, so within that context, we as a group then uh, drew the conclusion that you know this f concept of full treasury outsourcing, having no treasury function uh, and outsourcing the whole thing, probably isn't isn't really a runner for that organisation. That and the fact, of course, that we would have all lost our jobs had we decided that, uh, <laughs> made us <laughs> believe that it wasn't the right decision. It's a bit of a conflict <laughs> that you were making the decision. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but, 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 but in fairness, like that concept of the full outsourcing, it actually didn't get legs, really. It didn't run um, at all. And it's for those, for those particular reasons that, uh, that I've outlined um, uh, that it sort of very quickly fell by the wayside. Uh, it was kind of a buzzword, and I'm sure there was a CT 101 that was on fax or telex or something back then that um, <laughs> had similar discussions. And, and they probably they probably reached uh, they probably reached that conclusion as well. Look, that, that that is not a format that's gonna that's gonna kind of work. So if I if I think about the next phase then, uh, uh, which is probably from the kind of the late nineties into the early two thousands, um, that con concept of outsourcing was actually a very successful one from from both a corporate and an outsourced service provider um, uh, perspective, and it, it centered mainly on the outsourcing of treasury activities with, with, within tax driven structures. Uh, so the classic examples would be the you know the the the, the kind of lux uh, based structure or the I Irish based. Um, Treasury Centre um, structure, uh, and and those sorts of uh, tax-based uh, financial company uh, structures, uh, generally they were uh, a particular vehicle, an SPV in many cases, um, uh, which had some form of capital and debt hybrid funding, accompanied with kind of an intercompany loan portfolio parked uh, parked within them, and and that is a that's a nice ring fenced set of uh, treasury activities that lends itself nicely to be outsourced. Uh, the other um, obvious thing with any tax structure is that it is generally required to be uh, managed, maintained and operated within the jurisdiction um, of uh, tax benefit. So, so, so there was a lot of uh, activity in that space uh, whereby, you know, a multinational company would establish a um, financial company uh, to provide specific treasury uh, related generally intercompany lending style activities, uh, and those were very popularly outsourced, uh, particularly in uh, into Ireland, uh, into Dublin, which became sort of the the centre of uh, treasury outsourcing um, throughout the kind of late nineties and and uh, the two thousands. What's SPV? Uh, sorry, special purpose vehicle. Um, but 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 in 
well, in general, it is it is a a company that is set up specifically to undertake a limited range of activities. So, to give you a simple uh, simple example, is 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 if uh, you establish a company and let's say you put in uh, fifty million in capital uh, and you leverage two hundred million in debt into into a specific singular um, uh, 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 finance company. And then you use those funds to lend intercompany uh, around your group. Uh, then you, you'll find that all the interest flow is coming into that uh, entity that you've established from on an intercompany basis. Uh, and obviously there will, in many cases, be a tax deduction for that uh, at, at, at local source. And then uh, you will be taxed uh, at a lower rate, perhaps, where you're established. So that was the... The, the kind of the, the kind of model that would have been in place back then. Now it should be said that with BEPS and uh, ATAN three and all all these um, uh, other advances in in tax legislation, that those sort of tax structures are gone now, right? So it's not really a model that is uh, at the forefront. But but at the time it was very popular, and it was very popular to outsource uh, those particular sort of types of types of arrangements. So if you think about it now, what you've got is a bundle of service providers that have built up a skill set in in particular types of treasury activities, right? Generally speaking, kind of intercompany style um, activities, uh, managing loan portfolios, managing debt, stuff like that, right? Um, and it is a body of work that sort of kind of is very distinct and easily done on an outsourced basis because it can be ring fenced and you can put parameters around it. And you can define sort of how uh, how that how, how that how that should be should be managed. So then we reach kind of late two thousands, uh, early early teens, I suppose. Uh, and uh, the treasury outsourcing market kind of matured, and, and and a number a number of things happened. Um, uh, if you think about what we discussed there previously in terms of uh, those sort of tax based structures, they are treasury activities, but they're what I'd refer to as not very active treasury activities. So so in other words, you know, you might get a, a bunch of debt and capital in and then you might lend it out on an intercompany basis. But like then it just sits there, right? It's like core lending. You're not doing cash and liquidity management. You're not managing FX. You're not doing any of those sort of daily daily chores. So so whilst you've got a you've got an infrastructure in place that can do a lot, it's actually quite static in its nature. So then as the treasury outsourcing market matured, kind of a, a number of key things happened happened Firstly, the kind of service providers who were relying solely on the tax structures, they, they, to be honest, very often didn't have the relevant corporate treasury skills to provide the kind of level of add value service expected from clients. Uh, and this meant that a lot of them exited the market, to be honest, um, particularly the international banks who would have been big players in this market, particularly around those tax structures. Uh, and they found that the outsourcing model, which is effectively a professional services model, uh, didn't sit well with the kind of traditional capital-driven business model of the banks. Uh, so a lot of those banks exited this market, which left a lot of clients, to be honest, looking for a home. And um, so it kind of left a gap for service providers such as us, FTI Treasury, uh, who had corporate treasury outsourcing as our core business, right? Like that's all that we do from a business perspective, whereas the banks were kind of using it as a kind of an add-on. Um, uh, an add-on service. Uh, the other thing that happened at this time, which is which is probably more relevant and people will be able to kind of probably visualize a little bit easier, is, is that um, uh, the ability for outsourced service providers to provide kind of a wider range of value-added services uh, exploded, uh, really due to uh, both advances in technology and kind of general advances in the, uh, in the treasury world. That coupled with the kind of the CFO, CEO, board expectations of what a treasury function should do um, you know, that, that broadened rapidly and it started including things like, you know, group-wide cash reporting, forecasting, um, an element of AP and AR management, uh, global cash management. Uh, and if you think about it, these are all processes that kind of outsource service providers were somewhat used to managing in the tax-based structures, but they could now leverage on them to provide kind of true value-added services uh, to clients on a, on a, on a global basis. Um, so, so that evolution brought us to the kind of the third phase, and and that's kind of where we are now, um, to be honest. So, so now as 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 the kind of market has fully matured, uh, we tend to define treasury outsourcing as kind of the outsourcing of global processes, uh, which add value to uh, both business processes, so how things are done, but also the bottom line of an organisation. Uh, and I think it's important that. Uh, more often than not, these processes are business rather than tax driven and provided users to hosting technology, which can be you know rolled out on a global basis, which means actually the location of the treasury balance sheet 
it's kind of almost irrelevant um, from the outsourcing perspective. From our perspective, it's the end-to-end delivery of a particular treasury process that's important. And where the sort of P&L element of that or the balance sheet element of that sits in the world is irrelevant. Uh, and as I said, that's all facilitated by this kind of concept of the cloud, hosted technology, and obviously, you, you know, increased um, uh, uh, increased ability in terms of global banking and liquidity structures and the likes. A bit of a bit of a long answer I, to I a short like question, a, gents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not the one sentence answer. That's for sure. <laughs> so at least it wasn't treasure outsourcing when you outsource treasury functions. Yeah, <laughs> stop. That would be the worst. The long story. <laughs> so, so so let me see. Let me hear if I get that right then, because uh, just to summarize a little bit, right? So what you're saying is that there was this development over the three waves of treasury outsourcing, right? Uh, in the start, there wasn't really a treasury outsourcing thing. People would look at it, but they really felt like they couldn't. Uh, because the way Treasury was as an operation, the infrastructure is behind it and whatnot. In the second phase, it was being offered thanks to tax incentives in locations such as Dublin and Ireland, as general, let's say. Um, but the banks were the, really well, the ones that were doing it. Um, they eventually realized they don't want to do it anymore. And now we're in this third wave where we have these third-party providers specialized, such as FTI, in Treasury outsourcing activities. That's Correct. TLDR. And, and, is that the, probably the summary? one of the key ones, is I'm just on the... On that third phase is that uh, the the sorts of processes that are outsourced now, and we'll just, we'll discuss some of them in a moment. But importantly, they are very active. So they're they're the daily processes that need to be done by any treasury department to ensure the smooth running of the of, of the business. So they're they're not these kind of passive uh, structural style um, processes. They're they're getting their hands dirty. They're the, the muck and bullet end of um, treasury. So what's the difference between a treasury outsource company and a service center? One of our first guests that we had on the show was Bart Hendricks, who was talking about service yeah. centers specifically. And he was also saying that it's the repetitive tasks that you can outsource yeah. to perhaps a company, uh, a country with the lower, um, lower average wage, yeah. uh, where you can perhaps get some cost savings from yeah. there and the repetitive tasks, menial tasks that yeah. perhaps you don't want. Dublin is not that. No, it's not. And it's, it's, <laughs> Dublin is a very expensive it's place. It's quite the contrary. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, that is a good question. And we, we'd probably come to that further on in this conversation. But but uh, you're right. So so a shared services centre uh, tends to have uh, uh, highly replicatable tasks, um, uh, which are uh, administrative in, in nature. Um, and there is some skill set obviously required, particularly around the, the accounting elements um, and the likes. Uh, but very often, like the bulk of the work done in a shared service centre is is being placed there purely for economic um, uh, uh, purposes. Uh, Treasury outsource and, and indeed shared service centre, uh, as you're well aware, can be either kind of internal or third party. So it's not sort of... Um, uh, sure. uh, you know, it's, it's not purely a kind of a, a third party play. And, yeah. and, and we would, we would probably suggest that often the ones that, that we deal with that are, uh, that are working best are probably internal ones. Um, uh, just given that the, the nature of flows and the likes, uh, uh, you know, it, it is good to have that consistency and continuity of, uh, of, 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 the, of the team. Uh, treasury outsourcing is a little bit different in that uh, we're a little bit higher up the food chain, um, to be to, to be to, to be completely honest. So so our team here will be a team of treasury professionals uh, with a lot of corporate um, treasury experience. Uh, we'd have bank traders. Uh, we'd have a whole range of um, uh, treasury accountants and the likes. So the expectation here is that we are able to undertake um, very well-defined processes, but we're also able to have uh, an advisory input or a strategic input into those uh, into those processes. And all of that is done within a very tightly defined uh, risk framework that we would agree with um, clients, because obviously you don't want some guy going off and you know thinking he's Gordon Gecko or whatever and, and trading away. So 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 we have very well-defined. Uh, Shorting the housing market. Well, that's exactly that's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah. So, so we we actually spend a lot of time creating that framework up front, and we have, you know, we obviously have our internal framework. We're an SSAE um, a SOC one tested um, environment. Uh, we're a regulated entity. So, we, you know, we we you know we, we would have lots of sort of in, in, internal um, controls. But then at the end of the day, you also need to have a, a reflective risk appetite of your clients, right? So, and and that's a. Uh, that's something that's done on an individual individual basis, um, uh, client by client, and you know, we, 
I guess where we can help and slot in or any service provider can help and slot in is that, you know, we're lucky enough to see this across a whole range of clients so we can make suggestions, you know, and then uh, our clients can kind of pick and choose yeah. what they feel is the best suited to their um, to their internal culture. But to, to, to answer your question straight, we, we would be uh, providing a little more from a, a knowledge well perspective probably than a shared services centre. Um, and that flows both in terms of helping people with, uh, you know, day-to-day um, uh, activities and also the longer term sort of strategic aspects of banking relationships, banking structures mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So what are, can you break down those treasury activities and tasks that would pata- perhaps go towards a treasury outsource sure, yeah. company and w- versus service centres? What are those treasury tasks? So APAR, you said, for example, I've heard that in both that. So is it elements of AP and AR that you're you're managing versus a service center? Yeah, so is it kind of so, an overall so we, is it Venn Yeah, no, that's a fair question. And, and maybe just to address that one directly before we talk about other so so we we look at treasury processes. We we are not a shared services provider. So we're not yeah. processing invoices or you know, allocating exactly. stuff like that. Yeah. So where we would cross over with AP and AR is in terms of working capital management. So mm-hmm. ensuring uh, sufficient liquidity, ensuring sufficient currency, uh, uh, in many cases managing a forecasting element which obviously requires uh, ERP integration and uh, AP and AR information integration. So so it's more at the high level oversight, funding, liquidity level where we would look at um, AP and AR. But like, I suppose at the end of the day, that is the oil within the business, right? Uh, the processing of the invoices and the likes that we need to be done, obviously. Um, 100%. But the result of that is a treasury result. It's a it's a liquidity risk. Mm. It's a currency risk. Uh, in some cases, it's a credit risk. Um, and uh, the other space that we would play in in terms of helping people is, is defining uh, the best way to meet, for instance, your AP requirements. So, uh, you know, we'd often come across clients where you know, by no fault of their own or by accident, they're um, processing uh, what should be sort of ACH low value payments via wire. It's costing a fortune, so we'd help them redesign that process within their uh, within their ERP system and stuff. Justin, that's um, that sounds pretty much like consulting work. It's not. It's like it's more. Okay, we have I the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, which is not a bad thing. You know, just, just to be yeah. clear, coming from a consulting background, yeah. but it's more like bringing knowledge from what you've seen with other clients and servicing other clients yeah. into a new company rather than just taking a kind of task there that is, is done there, daily or there is an element. defining the strategy. Yeah, no, there, I mean, yeah, there, it's a fair comment. There is an element of that, right? And and we do have a kind of a consulting arm to our business as well. But like, but like I wouldn't, that, that's the add value element perhaps, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Our bread and butter, which I'll talk you through in a minute, is doing stuff. Um, you know, we get our, it's, 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 Let's maybe keep on breaking down the, the basics so we probably understand treasury also sure. and then definitely let's get into the, the business model and what you bring to the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first thing you mentioned when we asked um, what are the typical tasks or typical function of treasury that you would outsource, yeah. that the company would outsource, you said working capital yeah. management. And to throw some buzzwords out there, cash is king, yeah. cash is the lifeblood of the company, cash is whatever, you, yeah. you name it. Why would the company choose to outsource part of its treasury function, if not all its treasury function, beyond the tax incentive, which was the main reason initially, and as you mentioned at the beginning of this episode, why would somebody now say, okay, my cash management will be outsourced now? Yeah. So, so like, maybe if we take a step back a little bit, right, because I'll, I'll answer that question by going backwards, <laughs> if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Um, Perfect. Um, Go for it. Uh, uh, Generally speaking, when when we when we look at our clients, they fall into two sort of um, business models for outsourcing. Okay, um, the first is probably what you've just referred to there, uh, Guillaume. It's, a, it's the the concept of sort of um, working capital management in general. Okay, generally speaking, our clients that outsource to us would we we would define that as a, a, a range of services that would sit within an in-house bank. Okay. Now, when we talk about an in-house bank, we're talking about the treasury elements of an in-house bank. Not necessarily, you know, it might become Bobo Kobo, but not necessarily that that sort of 
concept. That's more down, as we mentioned, in the kind of shared services sort of, sort of element. So what do we generally see? How is it an in-house bank and outsourced to us? Well, firstly is, is what you mentioned there. It's just daily cash and liquidity management. Okay. Now, you know, that, how long was a piece of string on that, right? That, that could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But, but for us, it, it, it is really, it's the management of, um, banking structures. So the management of, uh, you know, daily flows across zero balancing structures, um, uh, the management of notional pools, the management of multi-currency notional pools, uh, the management of multi-bank sweeps. So the whole sort of gamut of those banking structures that is really providing the, the, the working capital, the liquidity, the cash oil into the business at an operational level. So, you know, you were getting, getting down and dirty. So. Mm, but so ju just to follow up on that, just because that, that's super interesting, you need to be really hands-on what the, what the company is up to, because I mean, it's, it's one thing to manage the cash and make sure all the ZBAs are up to date and that the national pooling money is used internally to repay debt and like invest overnight and so on. But what if a big payment needs to come up or what if a project needs to be funded or what if there is anything happening in the company that needs the actual money? You need to be very much involved in this kind of discussion as well. Correct. Or oh, is my understanding. So Okay. So we are we are absolutely involved, uh, and 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 that 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 is that is where when we talk about our kind of relationships with clients, like we we, we are. Uh, uh, that's another probably fundamental difference between uh, how we operate and how, for instance, a shared services um, would operate. We our clients will readily tell us that we're basically just part of their team, right? So so mm. we don't we uh, right we have SLAs, okay? We have we have agreed tasks we have all that sort of stuff for clients obviously right but but we are just part of their team at the end of the day so we participate in you know team meetings we have the team discussions we know what's going on in the company etc etc uh, and in addition to that we bring structure to the sorts of things um that you've just discussed so so i mentioned i mentioned that one of the things we do is daily cash and liquidity management you know managing all those flows and and and, and the likes and you know you can imagine all of the administration right that goes behind that because there's intercompany loans to be managed there's intercompany statements bank recs so we do all that stuff so it's, it's easy to say we manage cash pools and make it sound like a, you know, it's a five minute job in the morning but there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a little a little bit more to it as you as, 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 as you're well aware one of the other things we do uh, and which has become more and more popular and it's to do with some of the buzzwords that you threw around there like cash is king cash visibility etc uh, is we uh, uh, we facilitate uh, and provide services in the area of cash visibility and forecasting. So, so for instance, um, and when these processes are put together in in, in an in-house bank, right? They 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 kind of all they're or, they're organic. And um, so so you're asking these questions. You need to be, do this and you need to do that. When in fact you're you're quite right. And sort of by going through these processes, we have seen what we need to do and kind of package together a range of different sort of modules or services in order to meet what we believe are our clients requirements so so if you think of some of the other things right so so we do daily cash and liquidity management right uh, we would also manage um uh, cash visibility and forecasting which in itself facilitates right the the daily cash um uh, daily cash management we would manage all of the intercompany loans so you know core loans uh, and portfolios and the likes uh, we'll manage all of the FX risk associated with 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 the with the lending. So you know we're hedging back everything uh, and ensuring that at the end of the day, any cash that's mopped up um, or available is, as you mentioned before, it, it's available in base currency to pay down debt, to invest, to whatever. Um, uh, we also would, in those sorts of structures, uh, manage intercompany netting. Um, again, if you think about it, you're trying to you're trying to keep all of those internal flows, internal FX exposures centered, you know, in in a particular in a particular area. In, in this case, kind of an in-house bank type idea uh, that that then we're managing all of the all of the processes. Uh, and then, in, in addition to that, for lots of clients, we would run uh, an internal cash flow hedge program. So, so in other words, let's say you know. Uh, we have a, an in-house bank and it might be a, a US balance sheet uh, or a UK balance sheet, whatever it is. Uh, uh, yes, we have a German subsidiary and it has a dollar exposure. Well, they, they will hedge that using an, an internal FX with the in-house bank, which will allow the in-house bank to kind of consolidate all of those exposures up uh, and hedge them back out. So by housing those ranges of 
uh, treasury processes in one place. Uh, it means you can get a lot of a lot of benefit for for a corporate. And then and then t so to bring that back then, Doug, um, to your to your original question, why, why the heck? Yeah, that's all very well, and we know that. But why would you outsource it? <laughs> um, uh, the, yeah. the the reality is right to do all of those things takes uh, a significant amount of resource. Um, it takes a significant amount of uh, systems. Uh, really importantly, it takes a, a, a lot of system integration. Um, so data flow, uh, trade flow, um, cash flow, information, you know, it, it all needs to be consolidated, even market data, accounting output, it all needs to be um, consolidated up. And it takes a lot of um, implementation knowledge, right? So. So why would you outsource it? Because it's blinking hard to get done on your own. Is the is is one of the is is one of the answers. Um, uh, for instance, if you look at a U.S. multinational who may want to manage their global cash, right? For one, U.S. time zone isn't great. Um, so it's better to have someone managing that out of Europe. And and we've seen that lots of times with people having a regional treasury center out of Europe. But then if you think about it, right, you can you can have two guys sitting at an office in Europe, the, the risk is too high, right? You, you don't have segregation of duties, uh, you don't have management oversight, you know, it's very difficult to produce that. So suddenly you're looking at a requirement to have a team of maybe four, five FTEs, and um, you need systems in place, they need to create all that infrastructure. Um, so to create what you need to create, you you have uh, a significant expense and, and indeed a significant risk, uh, ongoing operational and implementation. So. So when we get in front of people and explain our methodology, how we could do this, we can roll it out, we can customize it, but generally we're speaking about a, an IT infrastructure that we already have in place. Um, uh, it, you know, it, it, it is an attractive proposition and then we have economies of scale from a pricing perspective. It's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. so Justin, um, we want to deep dive into this because that's super interesting and the whole system part of yeah. it. Let's uh, let's keep that for in a, in sure. a few minutes um, and, and finish on the what is treasury sourcing. Yeah. I think you've given quite some pros here and on the corporate treasury one one podcast, we like to play a bit the deep yeah, yeah, pocket yeah. as well. So in all transparency, not talking about FTI, but treasury yeah. outsourcing in general, we, we clearly understand the pros. You, you named it, resources, cost allocation, implementation effort. It's not only time, it's money. It's like all the stuff that you might not have the time or budget to put in, in yeah. within the company. But so the things that can be achieved maybe better when outsourcing yeah. seems quite clear. What is on the contrary, better achieve in house? What will be the cons of treasury outsourcing? If any, but I well, uh, I, you see, okay, so, so, so I, I view treasury as things that can be outsourced and probably things that can't be outsourced, right? So, so, and I, I think we've, we've probably covered some of those, but like, but like we, we would, I mean, might, we'll probably talk about this a little bit in, in the future, but, but, but the cons of treasury outsourcing are that you can't outsource everything. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you know what I mean? So that's, that's the main one. Now, now what I think your question is of the things you do outsource, what sort of are the cons? And that's a that's a fair that's a fair question as well. And and the the one that we typically come up against uh, because when we're when we're uh, when we're out talking to potential clients, generally generally speaking, our competition it's not another third party, it's the client themselves. So they're deciding should we do this ourselves <laughs> or should we get these no, guys exactly. to do it? Do you know do, 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 do you know what I mean? So 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 and as you say, the pros you can you can you can show kind of they're actually quite quantifiable, right? They're 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 yeah you know, they're, they're they're numeric. They're risk reduction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the main con that we kind of come up against is this concept of losing control uh, and and risk. Okay, so so that our our job then as a service provider is to try to mitigate that. You know that's our that's our that's our role because it, as you say the pros are, are sort of sort of evident. So 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 you know typically if it if a let's say a group treasurer is not used to this sort of structure, the, the sort of outsourcing concept, immediately saying, "Well, hang on, I'm I'm handing over control of potentially significant levels of funds, handing over control of uh, very high profile processes within our organisation, which if they're not done right, can come back and bite me. I'm potentially not growing my team numbers because I have this I have this resource here, and these are these are all the sort of perceived." cons I think that would be commonly uh, commonly out there now look in my role here it's obviously my job to say that we can over, overcome all of them <laughs> but 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 you know people in in reality people's 
people's characteristics and people's cultural views may lead them to believe that look this isn't for me and that, and, and you know that's that's fine that's a that's a a, a totally valid uh, approach if that's what if that's what people um if that's what people wish you know it's it's very it, it it's often very easy to uh, if people if people raise these issues concerns you know or worries or whatever it's very easy for us to counteract them actually um by both sort of you know, third party verification i mentioned we're SOC one tested so that takes a lot of the the kind of risk um element uh, away we're we're also regu- what is that sorry i don't know uh, standard operation control so so each year we are uh, audited by a third party international um uh, audit firm not not for numbers but for processes so to make sure the things that we do are being done in a secure and safe way so that's you know everything from executing a deal to settling a deal to confirming a deal you know it's it's a it's a full on process it's a, it's a big commitment from us actually to get it done um but particularly in the US it's an expectation um of of mm-hmm. of service providers and for instance our uh our clients internal order functions would rely heavily on that uh, uh, order being undertaken um, from a from 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 a kind of a, a kind of a security um, a, a security uh, okay. perspective. Okay. So that's interesting because with my business knowledge, which is limited, very very much so, um, you, you you I understand outsourcing. If I just look at outsourcing typically, and if I take myself out of treasure for a second, typically you'd outsource because it's not worth it to hire someone for that process at, at right now until you reach the scale at which it would make sense for me to just bring this in-house because it would actually be cheaper or whatever, right? But you're not, you didn't say that. You didn't say as of a certain size. And I think we've spoken as well beforehand. You you work with big companies yeah. as well. Yeah. So why is that not the case with Treasury? And sort of uh, I, why is scale not the... the well, sca- scale, the I, you see, I think, and here here's the rub of it, perhaps. Um, one person can process a thousand invoices, right? Um, but you need 10 people to process 10,000 invoices, okay? Now, in Treasury, one person can deal $100 million, right? But that same person could do 10 billion. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so there's, a, there's, a, there's an element of the, the value gets bigger, right? But the volume doesn't necessarily get bigger. Now, it, it doesn't, you know, I'm being a little bit facetious, obviously, it, 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 does, it does. You can be in more countries, you can have more it, FXs exactly, to manage, you can have... It, exactly, and, and you can have more currency pairs, but it's not that exponential, you've got 50,000 invoices rather than 1,000, right? It, it goes from, you know, 100 bank accounts to 200 bank accounts, you know, that sort of that sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, other, the, other, the other thing is that what, what we do... Uh, our clients become very comfortable with it. Um, so if they, for instance, keep on growing, they f- they find it difficult to justify changing um, what is already working. Um, to be blunt about it, yeah, don't fix um, things and broken. Like our our, I think a, you know, a, our clients always tell us if we knew about it, we don't we don't understand why more people don't do this is one thing they say, uh, and the other thing they say is well the other thing that always happens and we love this is that often. Um, uh, our clients, you know, the, the the group treasurer will have an assistant treasurer, and the assistant treasurer will then get a job somewhere else as a group treasurer, and it's one of our best sources of clients. <laughs> it's the it's it's marketing at its at its peak. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. So that means your services you provide. Well, that's you know that's what we read into it, you know, and we, and we do we we do go out of our way to get feedback on that because we we need to we need to be providing. So it gets back to that concept, right? Of uh, the added value service that we talked about earlier on. Um, we need to keep on pushing forward, you know, and finding the new thing, you know. So so I mentioned, you know, like for instance, uh, we, we would have been one of the first outsourced providers to provide a, a turnkey netting um, solution, intercompany netting um, solution. Uh, and that's proved really popular with our clients because, you know, it's an easy rolloutable, uh, easily beneficial, and there's, there's a definable, quantified financial benefit to clients of doing that, right? Um, uh, 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 we've also developed, you know, pretty robust forecasting and cash visibility processes. Um, again, using using third party tools, we, we'll we'll talk about them in in a while. These are things that are attractive, right? But if you look at if you look at if you look, like every year we'll do we'll do a review of you know all the um, uh, the sort of what's hot in treasury sort of um, surveys that get done. So every year we'll do a review of them, 
and we'll ensure that our modular services are tailored towards what the requirement is. Generally, we're ahead of the curve, but we just want to make sure we're we're sort of we're, we're sort of there or uh, there a bit. I'm I'm also conscious of the fact that previously when we asked you what's what activities can be outsourced and whatnot, we didn't let you finish and, and give us a full list. So could you just like rant off what are the treasury activities yeah. that get done uh, that are outsourceable, sure. which ones are not, yeah. and maybe which ones go into the service center? Just because I'm yeah yeah no fair enough. So 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 let's just be clear about that, right? Okay. So yeah. um, from an outsourcing perspective, in in our business, okay, and 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 generally speaking, on the the outsourced world, which I have to say is is a not a huge world, right? Um, uh, there, there, it's it's a kind of a boutique uh, boutique world uh, in which we in which we operate. Uh, I mentioned that there are a, a bundle of services that sit within kind of an in what we would refer to as kind of an in house banking structure, and it doesn't, you know, that's it's that's just an umbrella term, okay? And and within that, uh, we would see cash and liquidity management, uh, intercompany loan management, uh, FX risk management cash visibility and forecasting, uh, intercompany netting, uh, intercompany um, uh, FX uh, programs, uh, and then other other things like uh, perhaps bank system management, uh, bank fees management, spot FX, um, you know, that, those sorts of daily, uh, daily tasks where every day someone has to come in, you know, they need to see what the position is in every currency, they need to position that, they need to invest it, you know, it's those sorts of daily management of the group oil um, uh, that we that we would we would often manage. The second sort of structure that we see is what we would refer to as kind of a more a, a back office accounting and systems service, okay? So so under this model and this is a, this is actually another it's 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 a completely different model in, in in many ways. So so under under this model, rather than outsourcing a particular defined process, we're providing a sort of uh, foundation uh, or, or a fundamental level at which the treasury function as a whole um, can operate. So so let me give you let me let me give you kind of a how how that might look. So I think that will make make more sense before I give you the sort of tasks that we do. So so let's say a treasurer is sitting somewhere. And he has uh, an assistant treasurer and uh, two, you know, strategic analysts. Okay, uh, now they can make all the decisions. Uh, they can do all the trading. They can execute all of their um, uh, strategies within within th that small small team of you know three three or four people, right? But what they don't have is the uh, uh, the the infrastructure environment, the 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 the, the systems environment, right? Uh, they don't have the backup in terms of people who can do the settlements, the bank recs, the confirmations, um, issue intercompany uh, statements, all that sort of stuff, right? And they also don't have the technical accounting support there, okay? So so they've got all the core strategic treasury stuff, but sort of none of the the kind of level stuff that, 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 that holds it together. So, so you take them from zero to one, like your plug and play. It, it, precisely, you know. precisely. So, so under under those services, like so, if you think about it, they go, okay, well, look, look, we want you, we want you to manage it. So they'll have access to our treasury management system. That's the that's the that would be the key. It's a third party system, by the way. We 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 use third party systems. Uh, can you say can you say which one? Uh, yeah, CGI yeah. Twin is the one that we use. Um, we've we've ah, worked with them for them. we've worked with them for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like we're agnostic to systems, to be to be honest. Even though we work very well with CGI Twin, it works well. Uh, we do work with other systems as well. Um, uh, but but they so they will have access to to the system, uh, and that that's kind of the link, right? Between you know traditionally they would be what we would refer to as the front office, right? And and then we're providing all the back office and middle office services, and it flows all very seamlessly because we have all of the integration in in, in place. So you know they'll probably trade over FX all. It'll integrate STP with with with, with the with, with with the um, TMS. Uh, we'll manage all the Finastra sort of confirmations and all that sort of stuff, you know. So and then we'll we'll produce the the accounting the accounting output. So like. Under those, what we prefer to that's that's what we refer to as kind of um, uh, operation outsourcing. You know, we, we would do bank office activities, which would be like, you know, bank recs, confirmation, settlements, reporting, uh, bank information flow and integration. So we'll take all of the data from the banks and get it into the TMS. So you know, the the front office team can we can have visibility of that. Uh, then, from a middle office uh, perspective, we'll be doing kind of treasury accounting, which might be management accounts, hedge accounting, hedge documentation. Uh, uh, general sort of reporting around um, the accounting, 
uh, static da- data management, and 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 really importantly, under well under most of our under most of our um, uh, structures, uh, we provide a, a, a direct STP accounting file into our into our clients ERP environment. So you know the TMS will produce a, a GL mapped accounting file, uh, which will flow just on an SFTP basis um, straight into you know whatever it is uh, generally. SAP are one of the big one, one, one of the big accounting um, systems. So it's kind of very it, it's very seamless um, from that uh, from, from 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 that perspective. And then obviously, kind of gelling all that together is kind of the systems infrastructure. So you know the the TMS dealing platform, rate feeds, uh, confirmation systems, uh, integration with banks, integration with SWIFT, uh, and importantly, as I mentioned, kind of we we also have a a, a cash forecasting system that we use. Um, uh, which also is is great for kind of cash consolidation reporting and stuff like that. Okay, cool. And so, what are the tasks that typically you would even advise trade departments against outsourcing? One of those tasks. So, so ta- from from a daily task perspective, there's not much really, to be honest. That can't that can't be done, right? Um, uh, uh, but 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 the sorts of things that we would we would not see outsourced, to be to be perfectly blunt, would be would be uh, 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 funding. You know the management of the funding book, right? So the funding plan, the okay. implementation of the funding plan, uh, 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 negotiations. You know all of the all of the high level strategic elements, right? But at the end of the day, if a treasurer has agreed an RCF, there's not much value in 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 his assistant treasurer picking up a phone and drawing down a million quid because he did it, right? Any, anyone could do that, right? So so that's you know the the kind of Daily oper- operations of that can be done pretty pretty simply on a, on an outsourcing on no. an outsourced basis. But the par- partnership side of things is the part that you wouldn't relationships the outsourced uh, partnerships internal culture can be important, right? Um, so Just, yeah, uh, well, understand uh, uh, and 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 strategy development and risk appetite they are individual to any particular organization. Um, you know we. It could often depend on the type of organization, you know, uh, I mean, m- most of our companies are, are listed companies, but we do deal with some very big privately owned companies. And, and generally speak, speaking, they probably have a little more tolerance for risk, right? Because they're not, they're not reporting to the market and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but even, even within the listed companies, there can be quite a divergent attitude towards um, exposure risk management and, and, and their view on that. Uh, and also like, you know, s- s- strategies in relation to things like, uh, you know, interest rate hedging, um, FX hedging, commodity hedging, very much driven by the business view. Uh, and whilst we're we're embedded in the business as much as possible, really that needs to sit in kind of a, a risk committee that has uh, both, you know, business heads, treasury heads, and kind of finance heads in it. Do, do, do you know what I mean? It, it's, not, it's not a decision that can be, or a policy that can be developed solely by treasury in isolation, and and therefore it's not it's not really outsourceable. Um, you know, you need to be in the business, know the people, know know, know the business well. I like that. So as a treasurer, you just get to do all the fun strategic stuff, and you give the day to day stuff to someone else. Else, correct? Yeah, and, and and like to be to be honest, <laughs> like uh, we often operate in very much a hybrid um, environment. Okay, so so for instance, we would have a lot of U.S. companies. Okay, uh, that uh, would have would have you know massive amounts of daily cash management requirements, investments, et cetera, domestically in the US, right? So they have a team managing that. Yes, they don't want the deal, you know, by the time they come into work, they want to know that Europe's sorted and how many, how many dollars do they have out of Europe to mess with. And that's where we sit in. You know, we, we can sit in and say, yeah, well, we, we'll manage all that. And we'll also manage the intercompany netting and we'll always also manage the European FX. And you have all of that information and any of that cash available for you when you, when you arrive in in the morning, uh, and your team can then do the sort of the, the finessing, um, and, and and that's a that's a very popular model, to be honest. Um, a kind of a kind of a hybrid uh, hybrid model, uh, where where a corporate has recognised that they kind of need a, a regional treasury centre somewhere, you know, but they don't necessarily want to invest in the FTEs and the infrastructure or take on the Office. risk of, of having it itself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and so Ireland my understanding of it as a hub and we spoke to amy cullen about yeah, this which yeah. i know you're yeah, yeah, yeah. with as well um where she said that look ireland used to be the treasury hub of definitely europe if not globally uh, because of the tax incentives originally and what happened over time was 
Because of that, you had this whole ecosystem of treasury built up there. And then out of that, even though the tax incentives are gone, it's still seen as a, as a hub for uh, treasury operations globally. Um, but so there's an element of you just have the expertise there. But is there also the element of just time zone wise? Yeah. Is it like, like to be honest, yeah. companies? Um, what's the consideration there? Why? There's a, there's a, there's a couple of considerations. There, there, there's what you mentioned there, right? There's the, the sort of the sort of expertise. Um, Sort of like in a global world, right? Expertise is fairly fluid, as you know. Uh, as you know. And, <laughs> and if I look around me in Dublin, like, like we, you know, we're, we're we're also the hub for like you know Google and Meta, and the the diversity uh, within within their workforce is amazing to see. You know, it's amazing to see these people from all over the world. So yeah, I, that that kind of labour mobility is 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 a big thing, right? So so yeah, we we, we do have a particular kind of set of skills, uh, but there's also companies like FDI that have just developed right uh, so we have you know o over the years we develop skills structures etc and um, that, that are able to do this but but to get back to your to get to back to your, your kind of core question what 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 is it like like uh, 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 as I mentioned we we would have a significant number of US clients right uh, and obviously uh, Ireland is a uh, in an excellent place from a, a time zone perspective um, uh, can you explain that? Why is it? Why well, is it we, times we, what benefit does a US client get to having an Irish outsourcing? Uh, well, it's more more the time, in, not necessarily Ireland. You know what I mean? But it's more the time zone. Um, so, so we can so we can we can effectively bridge the whole. Well, European time is is obviously where we're, we're we're fine with. But we can also bridge a lot of um, the APAC sort of time zones if 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 necessary, uh, and. Man, you know, a lot of our clients would have significant operations in kind of. Uh, uh, in in Western Europe, uh, in general, uh, and then out into the kind of you know further regions of South Africa, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So 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 we're all you know we're able to manage all of the cash uh, within those zones within cutoff times that would be quite tight actually if you were trying to manage it out of the US um, uh, in terms of getting value and getting trades away and and uh, and stuff like that. So so that is that is attractive. Um, the other thing that's attractive, obviously, is that we're native English speakers. Um, so you know, every everybody is uh, able to able able to communicate, uh, and then even uh, they understand the Irish accent. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, a, that's fair enough. And, it's a I'd start, strong I'd, statement, I'd, native I'd, English speakers. <laughs> I'd start speaking in Gaelic now, and you won't understand anything. <laughs> and neither will I. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and then we uh, we also have an advantage in that we're we're uh, uh, from from a, a logistics perspective, we're, we're easily easy to get to actually from the US. Um, so there's loads of flights in and okay. out. We have a, 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 a visa clearance. You know, we have a US visa clearance within within Dublin, um, which makes things a little bit easier. Uh, and uh, Dublin's a great place to visit. So why wouldn't you want to have? A... <laughs> Service What's provider. it? Highest number of <laughs> pubs nice. per capita, yeah. or yeah. something yeah. like exactly. this? Yeah. Isn't this a so okay. yeah, like super cool. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, it has evolved, though I have to say. It's it, and 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 your initial comment in that it's somewhere where people look to when they're looking at these sorts of things is because it's where people have done it before, right? And who wants to be, yeah. you know, who was the first man to eat an oyster? You, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You kind of, there is there is a there is an element of um, uh, uh, being feeling safe with 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 what is being yeah. done and you know what your peers are doing. I mean, there's this. Uh, I mean, in that episode we did with Amy, we we brought up a quote from uh, Tim Cook at this time as well, which he was saying uh, once on a conference, which was that um, everyone thinks China is a cheap place to manufacture iPhones, but in reality, it's not that cheap anymore at all. But what it is is if you throw a, a shoe into a crowd, you'll hit three milling operators, yeah. uh, which uh, in in the UK or Europe or whenever else you, it doesn't happen. You, you would. Yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, and it's just the expertise is built there now, even if it doesn't. And I see Ireland a bit the same way as well for Treasury. It's like, even though the tax centers aren't there anymore, because they were there once upon a time, the expertise is so much there and the knowledge is there. And the, that's even the mental association, like you said about, you know, yeah. everyone's always done it there. So it's got a brand yeah. as, a, as a Treasury hub. Um, Google Meta being there definitely helps yeah. as well. And I know their Treasury operations are based out of there as well for yeah. Google, especially. So these kind of things, um, I mean, all like it, do it's, matter. It's funny you should say that because, like, in addition to that, we 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 would have a lot of the uh, European hopes for the banks here as well, and, and and that again, you know, it's sort of a. So you know, our our clients, our clients, generally speaking, they're very large global 
multinational organizations that and and whilst we 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 deal with probably maybe 50 or 60 different banks like 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 the vast majority of our um uh, interaction with banks is probably about a handful of banks you know the the big global banks that you can probably list off you, you know uh and they all have a major presence here which means that you know if we're working with a client on a particular structure or managing a particular structure they're really just around the corner we know them uh you know it's a it, it, it makes for a, 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 an environment that works well. It's it's a, what's it they refer to as kind of an ecosystem, you know, that, you know, everybody can thrive off each other, I think. Justin, thank you so much for this. I think we have a very strong understanding now of what treasury outsourcing is and how it functions. So let's uh, deep dive into how it actually works for the corporate, but also for the treasury outsourcing uh, company. So starting by the beginning on the corporate side, how does the transition uh, happen when a company chooses to outsource some treasury tasks? And typically here, I'd like to understand what's the business case in the first place to get treasury outsourcing, because you, you mentioned quite some um, economical yeah. value out of it. So I'd like to understand that. Like, how do you enter into contact with the company and say, okay, I'd like to consider some treasury outsourcing, or is it a good thing to do? And then how does it typically work? Like, okay, we need to outsource this type of function, yeah. or do you educate them on what they should be outsourcing? Yeah. How does it work exactly? Yeah, no, that's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a fair question. And, and, and like to, to answer that question, you kind of, I suppose we need to, you need to examine why, uh, a company would wish to outsource. What, what is the, what is the thing that is making, um, then, then outsource because, because that would often drive how the interaction, um, how the interaction would, would, would proceed. So, so there's a number, we see a number of sort of different elements to that and, and all of them have different nuances even though at the end of the day it results in us providing some form of um, some form of service some form of service to them so so if i think at the and these are in no order of sort of um preference or, or anything like that this is they, they, they're one is as common as the other um but in many cases there might be some kind of catalyst um for a requirement for a particular service okay uh, a big one would be something like an acquisition or a spin-off okay um uh, so if I think about uh, a client that we onboarded uh, recently enough, and they made a, a, a they they a very large um, US based client. They they made an acquisition um, that all of a sudden massively increased their international footprint. Okay, so so now and and the act the the acquisition they the the acquisition they made had a pretty good uh, banking structure in place with one of the global banks that was also a partner bank of that. Um, of that client right so so now they're, they're, they've they've made this acquisition they have a kind of a nice banking structure uh, and they, you know zero balancing or currency pooling or whatever and they're looking at it and they're going well right how are we gonna how are we gonna manage this uh, you, you know so so they have they have a kind of an they have kind of a, a an immediate problem um that they need to deal with uh so 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 under those circumstances what we can do is we can step in and say well look we can fix that problem for you very quickly um, so that's, that's do they know about it? Sorry, Justin. Do they know about the possibility of outsourcing treasury, or do you? How does it work here? Yeah. So that, do you uh, look it, at the mergers and acquisitions news and uh, exactly. after those companies. No, it's a, well, 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 we 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 do try to uh, identify opportunities in in that realm. But but int interestingly enough, a, a very so so we could go out knocking on doors, right? Uh, and we could knock on a million doors. And the chances of us finding some lad who wants to <laughs> their treasury is, is is reasonably low. In fairness, <laughs> so, so 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 we focus on being known at the catalyst point. Okay, so in this case, right, um, it was a bank. A, ba a, a bank said, "Well, you're struggling with this. Uh, you don't know how to manage it. We know these guys do that sort of stuff. Have a word with them." Now they won't necessarily recommend it because they're a bank right but they they will say that it is a it is a solution that you should uh investigate that's what that's that, that's what happened in this case if you think about it uh, and that happens a lot right because if you think about it um let's say uh, a bank is pitching for uh, a global liquidity structure okay uh you know zero balancing in 40 currencies uh, across 30 countries and they've done all the maths and it's going to save this company, you know, 10 million a year and it's going to give them access to $300 million and it's all brilliant. And the treasurer is going, that's brilliant. I love it. Love it all. Love it all. Well, how the hell am I going to manage it? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah. so now, now we have, we have a bank that wants to sell something, right? We, we, we have a, a, a client that wants to buy something 
but there's a bit in the middle about how you know how do we how do we look after this so so if we're close to banks and stuff like that right and they can put our uh, solution forward as an option just just as an option it's just a discussion you know we often have discussions and they don't come to fruition and you know no one the bank doesn't get the deal and we don't get the deal or whatever you know but but we it is an option right and it's an option that really any corporate looking at one of those significant changes should investigate right to see if it's see if it's one uh see if it's see if it's one for them so that's that's how that's it's, it's a very intuitive question because because that is how that uh that comes back it comes about uh and and a lot of our uh, uh growth is actually from that sort of um reference uh stroke being in, be, being with the right person at the right time um and and it gets back to that concept of catalyst so if you can identify the catalyst then you can see what is the who is the catalyst driver, right? And they're the people that you need to, um, uh, they're the people that need to understand your potential um, potential solution. So, I mean, we talked we talked about an acquisition there. So another another thing might be just the introduction of a new process. Okay, so so let's say a company wishes to uh, implement an intercompany netting process, and and again they're saying, okay, great, makes sense, we can. The, you know, it all adds up. We can see the benefit, but geez, we, don't, we just don't want the hassle of having to run all that process and manage all that. Well, then we can come in and say, well, look, we can we can do that, and this is precisely how how we'll do it. Again, very that's a very straightforward sort of uh, sort of proposition. Uh, and then then there is also sometimes this isn't very often the case, but sometimes people are just looking for cost savings. Um, so they're saying, well, look, I have you know this going on and it's costing me a fortune why can't we just do it this way you know like for instance right like uh, let, let's just take netting as an example but it could be anything companies might have developed an internal netting piece of software for instance right we, you'd often see that and it's kind of a hodgepodge of spreadsheets and you know databases and yeah, stuff right. like that you know and and there's one guy who kind of knows how it works and no one else in the world does you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and, and like, speaking it, truth here yeah and you've seen this right <laughs> yeah, that's how we both like we yeah. both see that yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly how it goes and when that person lives like the two yeah, yeah, exactly it's our, our new treasurer comes in and recognizes the risk right and they go well look there's a better way to do this and and you know so so our our services become sort of obvious from that perspective uh, and then and then another another sort of catalyst uh for for, for wanting to outsource is um uh, uh a resource issue so in some jurisdictions it's virtually impossible to hold a full treasury team and incredibly expensive <laughs> so 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 really we're do you remember I mentioned those services we're, we're providing sort of systems, back office, middle office, right? They're very attractive yeah. in those jurisdictions. Um, you know, Northern Europe, Switzerland, places like that. Uh, you know, it's hard to hold a treasury team. It's extremely expensive to do it. Uh, and and uh, a treasurer may just recognize that risk and say, look, let's just do this another way. Uh, and, and let's look. Mm. So, so those are, those are sort of the catalysts. So, your 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 I sidestepped your question, which is which is sort of how, <laughs> how 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 does it work? So 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 we we would generally uh, uh, have having had that initial engagement with a client. Okay, um, uh, our first thing is to understand precisely what their requirements are from a process perspective, and we try to keep that big picture. So you know we will say, okay, we we understand that you have a pooling system, so you need daily cash and liquidity management. That's what this will look like. Okay, so you know. And, and we would have a, a reasonably detailed spec. So, you know, it'd be things like, okay, we will uh, do the cash positioning, we'll manage uh, all of the ZBA flows, we'll identify the currency flows, we'll hedge them back to base currency uh, uh, within particular risk parameters. You know, we, we, we would define quite well in our proposal the things, you know, the steps uh, that will be undertaken. Because in fairness, often clients kind of don't understand them, right? Because they're coming into something new or fresh, uh, a new environment that made an acquisition uh, so so they need to feel comfortable actually that you know what's what's going to be done is is, is correct so so we would agree that spec uh, having done that we try to take over as much of the implementation effort um, as is possible uh, and the reason for that is is quite simple is that we kind, we kind of know what we're doing right we do it all the time okay so so us to integrate integrate uh, a ZBA structure you know to get all of the bank flow information into our TMS do it in a day you know whereas whereas if you're if you, if you were trying to do it yourself from scratch you'd be looking for a developer for three weeks and you know you, you kind of it kind of would never never get done right uh we 
we, for instance, have uh, we use FX all generally for trading, but we're we're again we're we're agnostic as to what trading platform we we, we would use. Uh, but we would have an STP link directly from that into our TMS. Again, if you were trying to create that again, you know, from from a starting point, it's a lot of effort. So so that's why we 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 take a hands on approach to the implementation. And really, the only thing we expect from the client is. Um, uh, any data that's required. So generally, that would be things like you know static data. Um, you know the the the, the names of the subsidiaries that'll be borrowing. Uh, we'll get some tax input around transfer pricing rates that need to be applied, stuff like that. And and then we will create the whole atmosphere, the t it's the, sorry the whole environment in terms of the uh, the TMS setup and the likes. Uh, and then importantly, what we do is we agree a set of procedures with our clients, which which kind of generally outline what needs to be done when uh, daily, weekly, monthly. Um, etc. Uh, and 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 we agree that we agree that with them. Uh, generally, then we'll move into kind of a, a testing environment, uh, whereby you know we'll we'll do things like uh, test accounting flow, for instance, right? So so you know we we'll provide test accounting files into the back end ERP system. Uh, we'll do like penny tests on payments. Uh, we'll do test deals on uh, the FX platform. Um, and and then and then when we have all of what we call the infrastructure set up, we move into the interfacing um, phase, which is where we uh, uh, start to roll out those services both internally and externally. All right, so 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 we start dealing with the banks on clients' behalfs, and then we also start all of the internal communications in terms of if there's statements required, if uh, uh, if a company you know a subsidiary needs to borrow funds, how do they do that? How, who do they communicate to? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, so it's. I like that. Um, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say it's, it's a quite a it's quite a formal process, and obviously we have a detailed implementation plan and stuff like that. But but our our main thing is we try to do as much as possible. That's the that's the sort of driving force. And and, and like to be honest, the you know we're doing that because yes, it's attractive to clients because they're kind of going okay, cool. Um, uh, but but day one, you know they 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 need to trust you right so they're on board with us and we have weekly calls and all that and all that and all that sort of stuff uh and also to be honest it's easier for us to manage the implementation because we we, we do it so often we kind of we kind of know how to go about it and as long as um, our clients have confidence in us and we're showing progress in the right way then you know it works very well for both parties mm. how do the corporates keep score? that's one of the things you mentioned in the cons right the um, losing control kind yeah. of yeah how do you mitigate that as a as a treasury outsourcing company? Like, how do you make sure the company can can keep an eye yeah. or even control yeah. over what is done by the by the company to which they outsource? Yeah. How does that? Oh, that's it's a good it's it's a good question and kind of a fundamental part of the trust that you need to build. Um, that you need to build to build with clients, uh, and there's an element of um, sort of pre engagement. You you need to you need to demonstrate. Um, the ability to do that. So, so, so pre pre engagement with a, with a new client, we 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 for a start will always encourage them to talk to some of our current clients, right? To 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 understand the field because because we have formal processes around this, which I'll explain to you in a minute, right? But at the end of the day, you need to talk to someone um, to understand how it works in operations. We can yeah, you can say we have reports this, that, and the other. But you know, if they if they don't work, they don't work. So 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 day one, we we encourage people to talk to our other clients um, to understand to get that feel for how it works. Um, and and before I also before I get into the kind of the formal processes that we adopt, it's important to remember that when when we when we uh, engage with a client, we 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 truly become part of their team, right? So 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 we we like our front office team will be interacting. Um, with clients every day, you, you know what I mean. It's 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 a day. There's a daily sort of back and flow uh, of information, depending on what the client requirement is. Um, uh, you know, some clients want you just to do things and stay away, uh, and just give us the, give us the end answer. Whereas some want to be much more involved. And that's fine. We we can accommodate uh, accommodate either uh, e e e either way. Like like if I think of the formal sort of processes though around that right because it's all very well for us to have those those are kind of informal processes right they're they're they're, they're kind of um, their meetings their communications 
uh, uh, and their um, un- b- building a trust, right? And and those are probably the important things for the the teams, the treasury team, for the assistant treasurer and the treasurer. We'll try selling them to internal auditor, and you'll be and you'll be in yeah. you'll be you'll be in big trouble. So 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 definitely. So we definitely have a very formal uh, approach to this, right? So 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 the first the first thing that we will do is we will agree risk parameters within the procedures and controls document. Um, with all of our clients, right? So, so, so if you if you think about it, those are simple things. Like, for instance, right? Uh, if our exposure is in excess of um, the currency equivalent of two hundred fifty thousand US dollars, we want our hedge back to zero. It's very a very simple parameter, all right? Uh, and 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 so, therefore, we will look at uh, currency exposures uh, resulting from all of the activities that we're undertaking, and if they breach that limit, we'll 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 hedge them hedge them back to zero, uh, and we we you know, we produce reports on a on a daily basis that will show that all exposures are within those within those limits. Um, uh, you know, we, we we'll operate within um, counterparty exposure limits for investments, for instance. You know, we might say you're only allowed to have up to you know 100 million in that money market fund, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So 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 the general risk parameters that you would expect to see in any treasury policy, in in, in reality. Um, also would apply to the operations um, that we that, that we undertake. Um, so so that's one one very well defined way. Now uh, we we produce daily reports for all of our clients that will sort of prove that we're operating within those uh, within, within those activities, and that's that's very important. Uh, the other the other the other things that are important are those third party accreditations that I mentioned, you know, about the SOC one and stuff like that. And and also we welcome uh, our clients' internal orders in, you know, whenever uh, whenever it needs to be. The other thing, right, um, just to, to to put a bigger sort of framework on it, right, is that is that we day one we create an infrastructure that is very risk averse for a client. Okay, so 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 all of our clients have um, their own TMS database, for instance. Okay, uh, 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 they have their own bank accounts, which aren't which are their bank accounts. Okay, you know what I mean? there's no there's no commingling of funds. None of that sort of stuff. Everything is ring fenced on a client by client basis, and that will include um, uh, FX dealing relationships, for instance, uh, and importantly, really importantly, uh, the banking systems. So, bank accounts and banking systems. There's no mix, commingling, or anything like that. Each client is operating within their own defined environment. They have their own defined uh, standard settlement instructions established within that environment and to give you to give you a concept as to how that works right we we, we for instance will uh be set up because we need to make settlements okay we're doing fx deals we, we need to make settlements on behalf of, of, of clients but we will be set up within the eb systems to only be allowed to make payments to uh, a, a, a bank account where there is a locked down pre-format template in place, you know, if you think about that, right? Now, to put that lockdown pre-format template in place, we, we, we generally will input it, but then it would need to be approved by our client. Do you, do, do you see what I mean? So, so they have ultimate control over those that sort of payment environment. And we have lots of other sort of uh, control, you know, system-based controls in place that ultimately limit the li- limit the li- limit the risk. So, so there, there's a number. You know, to get back to your your key question is how do you, how do they keep an eye on us? We have a kind of an established framework in terms of systems. Uh, uh, that that means that you know only certain things can be done. It's only possible to do certain things within within that uh, environment. Uh, and then uh, in terms of kind of risk elements uh, and risk reporting. Uh, we have both those soft communications, but also importantly, we have the kind of the the, the daily reporting um, that will be produced. And then the final sort of guard on that, I suppose, is, is our accounting process. So we run accounting uh, processes for clients at least monthly, but a lot a lot of the time, either daily or weekly, to to to, to be honest. And obviously, that's kind of a a, a, a control. Um, and and uh, you know even things like like we undertake bank reps on a daily basis for all clients, and then we have to kind of prove those bank reps. So there's all the sort of controls you would expect, and then the uh, external reporting back to clients as well. Very clear. Okay, so a lot of it is around making sure that again you're plug and play, right? Uh, every time as soon as they come in, they get access to all of this infrastructure, Correct. all of this systems, and everything straight away. Yeah. And is integration not? I mean, there's a lot to set up, right? What's the onboarding process like for a corporate in that yeah, sense? Like, how much time does it take to get ramped up then? Yeah, so so it's not as complicated as you might think. The key integration that the key 
external integration that we need to do is is generally is to integrate with a corporate bank. Um, but as I mentioned, generally speaking, we're dealing with a handful of the big banks, right? So they're pretty well used to it, as, as are we. And then on the back end, reintegrate back into the ERP system uh, from, a, from an accounting perspective. Um, and then if people are going down the forecasting route, then we'd also look for sort of ERP integration from a, a, an underlying AR and AP perspective, you know, to get the, to get that, get those, uh, get those, get those data flows. But again, the, you know, these are things that we do all the time. So they, they don't generally take as long as you might expect. So, so we would generally say that if we're onboarding a client, uh, the implementation phase is anything from eight to 12 weeks, depending on the, on the complication of the, uh, of the process that, that, that they're putting in place. But even kind of a, a pretty complex client, generally 12 weeks will, will, will get us set up. Uh, mm -hmm. Often our clients actually like to slow it down. So, so we'll put all the infrastructure in place, but the kind of, you need to have an internal change management process as well, right? You, yeah. you don't be scaring people off by, you know, giving them too, too, too much to bite off. So, you know, for instance, we might introduce, uh, uh, just the management of, of, of the, of the daily pools, right. And then layer on maybe netting at a later date, then maybe layer on some FX at a later date, you know, so, so there are, you know, there, there are kind of ways of softly, softly, um, progressing. Yeah. Treasurers are very risk adverse people. Is the common theme that keeps coming yeah. up in most of the conversations that we have. So, you, yes, you guys have the certification. Um, again, apologies for pushing and, yeah. and being a little bit of a devil's advocate here, but you have the certification. You have the clients' uh, testimonials. They've spoken to your clients, whatnot. not. Nonetheless, you're another counterparty uh, risk for them, right? In in most situations. Well. Um, uh, what do I do? I, I suppose just to be, just to be clear, we are a service risk, but we are not. We are not a credit counterparty risk at all. Just to be clear on that, do you know what I mean? Explain the difference. Well, well, there is no financial exposure to us in terms of you know funds. Uh, you know, if, if, if you're executing trades, we are executing. You have access to bank accounts. We are executing trades, yeah. but we're not. Uh, there is no funds held in the name of FTI Finance on behalf of clients. Do you, do you, see, do you, do you, no. do you see it a bit? So there is a there is an execution risk. There there will be an execution risk. Yeah. Um, uh, there's an execution risk everywhere, and our argument is that if you have your execution in a well managed and controlled environment, it's much less risky than having it in a kind of a, a, a two man shed in uh, Benny Lux or something like that. You know, um, <laughs> sorry, not to cast aspersions, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but no, you know what I mean. Like, 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 uh, uh, if you look at if you look at where kind of treasury disasters have happened in the in 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 the past, right? It's always been sort of a a very small um satellite uh not correctly controlled environment you know if you think of i think of uh, from an irish cons concept we had uh, john rusnak in the you know trading on behalf of other Island irish banks in the us in a small office you know do, 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 do you know what i mean and there's been various other corporate sort of disasters which i won't go into uh but they've always been in you know that's that's sort of where the where the risk is like so so you know we would we would suggest that it's safer to have it in a well controlled environment with with a, you know a reasonably large team um, that is well segregated. I think, I think what was meant as well is in a sense of you hold processes and knowledge, right? Especially if you outsource for an extended period of time, yeah. the treasury department and the company is completely reliant on, I mean, we're saying you, but treasury outsourcing services in general, right? Yeah. Not FDI in particular, yeah. but you outsource some strategy, you outsource how the money is managed and how certain things are executed and you might lose knowledge. But actually, whilst we were asking, I'm also thinking, that's the same thing if an employee would leave. If a, a small treasury department has yeah. one of their key employees leaving, you're in the same embarrassment as if your treasury outsourcing company. Employee is more likely to leave than a treasury outsourcing Actually, is likely to leave. Well, our, 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 right. I see our, one of our points, I suppose, is that we are a treasury outsourcing company. That's all we do, mm -hmm. right? So if, if, if we leave, we, 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 we don't exist anymore. <laughs> exactly. Whereas, whereas in the past, well, now in, in the past, in fairness, like banks were big in this and they did leave and they did leave people high and dry and it was a problem. Do, do, you, know, do, do you know what I mean? But, uh, because they're doing other Correct. You know, well, so whereas, whereas this is our core off. business, we're in it for the long run. Uh, mm. uh, it's a key, it's a key selling point. Um, uh, you know, we have a, we have a very well defined strategy in terms of corporate treasury and outsourcing. Um, that is our strategy. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if 
we don't claim to be anything other than that. Uh, we know mm -hmm. it's a niche market, but we believe that we can perform very highly in a niche market, and that's a, a good space for us to be in. You know, um, so yeah, like like I, I I hear what you're saying, but one of our one of our selling points is that yeah, we, we have this team, right? And you're not exposed to that person leaving. Um, you know, you have this cross trained. True team of people that are that are doing things and if at some stage in the future you want to bring it back in house you're you're dealing with a professional organization that'll help you do that yeah do you know what i mean like we're not going to just run away and leave you high and dry if things change and for whatever reason like for instance if one of our one of our clients gets acquired right you know the new acquirer might take the view that oh, no look we're, we're already managing some of the stuff in-house so we'll migrate that grant you know we'll 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 we'll, we'll help you we'll help you get there um, do the yeah exactly you know um so Long game. It's a you need to tease through the detail to understand um, the risk profile. I think of the of the mm. of the uh, uh, of the business model, and and I, I think uh, from from our from from our perspective, the 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 sort of the, the proof of the pudding is the fact that we're we're dealing with some really really large uh, multinationals, you know, um, with you know massive audit requirements and internal audits, uh, and we pass the muster on all those, you know, and and before we ever. Um, uh, well, not always, but generally speaking, before we uh, go live, you know, engage with a client or sign a contract, we're subject to massive due diligence uh, from both kind of a, an IT perspective and a, a kind of a process and internal uh, order perspective. You know, so sometimes to the extent where you're kind of wondering why, you know, why does he need to know what colour my socks are, you know? <laughs> but look, we're happy to do that, you know, that's the that's the nature of the business. Like, you know. So, so take us through that then. So move over to like, what does it mean for you when a new client comes in? So what does that look like? Cause I, and indeed. So I guess why we're, we're saying this is treasury is such an integral part of the oil of the company, yeah. as you mentioned it before, yeah. right? So just, and it's what you said as well, like the perhaps the only reservation that people have typically service is just lack of control yeah. almost, that, or the perceived lack of control, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. At the end of the day, if you're reporting very uh, transparently, yeah. if everything is in place, if they have full uh, transparency into your systems, yeah. whenever they want, uh, if you're complying with all audit requests, then none of that actually exists. Yeah. It's just a perception that, hey, how can I have someone else managing my bank accounts? Yeah, but um, like, I, so, so we never we as I said we rarely operate in a bubble, okay. So so yeah. like we we have all of our clients we have a boss. It's like a boss, right? And it, you yeah. know it, it might be the assistant treasurer, or it might be the the head trader, or something yeah. like that. But but he's our boss man, kind of right? Uh, and, yeah. and and we we uh, are engaged with that person uh, all the time. And so they're well they're well aware of 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 kind of. Uh, uh, what's going on, and they're what's fully in control. On. We we take direction from them, so they are controlling, mm -hmm. right? So 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 really, how do you control a team of people? Uh, is 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 what you're asking? And 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 again, it's easier to control a team of people when uh, they're a third party in many ways because they are subject to much stricter contractual mm -hmm. um, requirements than applications. Just people who are working for you. So. Like the control element is actually overcome very quickly uh, once people kind of understand mm. the sort of the, the risk and you know the, the, as I said the infrastructural environment and then also sort of the the the, the, the manner in which um, business is, is undertaken and and you ask you know when a client comes in and, and talks to us how do we explain that well we can we we actually will sit down and walk them through our sort of processes how we do things you know and show them in our office you know physically how this how this works. Uh, uh, and how the communications works, the sort of reporting they'll see. Um, uh, uh, and, and then we also, obviously, you always, you know, will will offer to undertake any kind of due diligence or whatever sort of requirements yeah. um, that, that, that are required. So, you know, it, it's, it's something that ironically doesn't really uh it comes up right but it but it but it, it, it comes up and it gets dealt with reasonably quickly and um, it doesn't become a sticking point. Mm, super interesting. Take us into the systems that you use then, just sure. because we've ta we dabbled on it yeah. for a bit of time now. Can you and you, you know, share names where you feel comfortable yeah, yeah, sharing names? Yeah. Um, which uh, which systems and do you use? Which ones are built in house? Yeah. And which ones do you in use religiously no, a, yourself and stand by? Yeah, treasury technology is a is a is a dark yeah. art, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we've had a few different vendors on. We've had Caribe on. Yeah. We've had FIS on. Yeah. Uh, we've had a few fintechs on yeah. a lot of FX yeah. 
uh, platforms we've had on as well to discuss those because they're obviously experts in yeah, each yeah. other. So we, we have already, our listeners have a bit of an idea yeah. of the overall landscape. But oh, fair enough. As you are the experts in treasury, yeah. as in that's why people should come to you. What systems are you yeah, using? Well, we're, so, so we would view us as a kind of practitioners, right? Um, so we're... As you say, we're kind of at the coal face, right? The 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 the, the yeah. users of these users of these systems. So so we we've, we've nothing to kind of gain from uh, saying yay or nay against. We we just want to make sure that they that they that they operate well. Uh, if I if I if I so first of all, just to answer your question straight up. We use third party software, and um, we don't. We are not software developers. We don't believe that that's uh, uh, where we need to be. Um, to be to be blunt about it. Uh, we uh, uh, paint ourselves as experts in in managing treasury, uh, and if I went into a really large uh, uh, multinational company, many of them would run a mile if they if they saw that they were developing their own internal software. Um, and, and as you know, some some do, but they generally at some stage decide that this wasn't a great idea. Let's let's go and let's go and get it. Uh, a third party who'll manage this all on our behalf. So, so, so just to start okay. with that, like, what? So, so what we do okay. is, 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 is we we have built a treasury infrastructure that we believe uh, works very well for our clients and is best fit, uh, best fit for our clients. Uh, but to be blunt with you, um, uh, uh, I would be reasonably agnostic around most of the systems in that most of them do what they say they'll do. Um, to a greater or better extent, right? Do, 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 do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, so, so I, if you don't mind, I'm actually probably not going to say names because uh, we deal with lots of different systems providers uh, in in general. I told you who our who our who our main uh, treasury management system is, and they're they're mm-hmm. great. Uh, but but you know, it is at the end of the day, it's a treasury management system. Do you know what I mean? And and, and maybe it's more about the relationship. And uh, we've been using that mm-hmm. system for a long time. Used to it. We've built a lot of. Um, We've built a lot of integration. Right, you know the system. We we have a lot of uh, stuff going on with it that that makes sense for us. But if you were to start from the beginning, I'm sure it'd be an absolute beast to try to try to get to put in place. You know, so yeah. so so I'd start by saying like you know that really in reality I, I I feel a lot of the systems can do what they say, and then it's up to sort of personal preference. You know, um, uh, uh, around that. Um, the other thing I'd say is that we have generally gone out and looked for systems that do specific things that we want to do right what what the hell am i what does that mean <laughs> yeah. uh like 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 in my books right gone are the day of the treasury management system right and it does everything uh, you know like we've become into a much more modular world where you know you have your core treasury management system but then you have other systems that do other things because they're specialists in that area and they do them really well rather than just trying to rely on one uh, on one name to kind of to kind of do everything. So, so if I if I briefly outline what our sort of infrastructure looks like, okay. So, so yeah, we have we have our our core database, which would be the Treasury Management System um, itself, the, the TMS, uh, and then generally speaking, from a front office perspective, we're using uh, one of the FX trading platforms. That would be the main, you know, our main dealing is in FX. Now we do, you know, a lot of money markets and deposits and stuff like that. But from a volume perspective and a value perspective, our main dealing is in, is in FX. So we use one of the, uh, we use FXO, but we also use 360. So, you know, we're, we're happy to use any um, sort, of, sort of trading platform. Uh, but if people ask us, just because we have it well integrated, we generally will fall towards the, um, the FXO platform. Um, uh, we will have that STP'd directly into our TMS. So trade gets done, gets polled every two or three minutes or things like that. So it's almost instantly into our uh, into our treasury treasury management system. Uh, on the back of that, we have uh, the industry standard confirmation system. Again, uh, instant flow through uh, in terms of when the deal gets uh, executed. So you're talking, you know, between confirmation and execution, really a really short turnaround to catch any um, catch any potential issues that 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 may that that may arise. Uh, on the back of that, so that's you know that's that's three sort of integration systems, right? We have um, FX dealing, we have um, confirmations, and we have the uh, the core the core DMS. Um, uh, the other uh, system that we would use, and we we mentioned earlier on, would be uh, we have a, a cash reporting and forecasting system. We actually currently use two of them, depending on the um, the client's requirements, uh, and that is integrated in a number of ways. It's integrated with the treasury management system to get all details of treasury treasury flows 
uh, we'll have it integrated uh, with the uh, banking system, so, so that we have you know kind of open cash balances and cash you know actual cash flows that we can you know do um, actual forecast for finance and stuff like that. And then and then additionally, we generally will have that forecasting system integrated with our client's ERP side, so you know to get the AP and AOR. So again. You have a, a system, a modular system of the forecasting that is then integrated on our side with the banking system and the um, TMS, and then also linked in uh, from a forecasting perspective with the um, uh, client side ERP. Also, importantly, you know, it's obviously that's a uh, kind of a cloud-based, web-based system. So, so we're not we're not doing forecasting in isolation, right? We need to know what's happening around the world. We need to know what are the flows going to be in France, what are the flows going to be in Germany. So, so, so. So whilst we will try to obtain all the AP and AOR information on a global basis, if there is a global ERP, in many cases, as you know, there might be a global ERP with a, a couple of fellas won't be on it in Spain and two lads in Portugal won't be on it either. Do you, do you, you know, so, 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 so obviously there's, there's access, you know, there's local access from a, from a forecasting um, perspective as well to be able to cut a input. And also, you know, they might have one-off tax payments or something like that. So, so, so we provide access globally um, to that forecasting system. So, so there's another system that's the cash reporting uh, and for and forecasting system. Obviously, we have kind of market feeds coming in from various different different areas, which will help us produce market markets and all that sort of stuff. And then our other uh, main integration from our systems integration from the TMS perspective is with the banking systems. So, you know, we need to be getting the MT nine forties or camps or whatever whatever they are out, out of out of uh each of the uh, banking systems and into our TMS so we can track, you know, what's going on. We can do, we, we can do bank recs, we can track intercompany movements, you know, we can apply interest to them, all that all that sort of good stuff. Uh, and on the flip side we need to be able to get payment files back out of the TMS in there. So 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 we're providing all of that sort of in, in environment in terms of the, uh, the the banking integration, and then probably the final key integration that we do, which is is pivotal really to be honest, is the integration of our treasury management system with the back end accounting system of our client. Uh, I mentioned that before. It's often, you know, uh, it's often SAP or one of the big kind of uh, ERP systems. And what we will do is we will produce a precisely mapped treasury accounting file uh, that will go into into that system. So. That can be really complicated, you know, so it could have, in in some cases, we have like hedge accounting um, for derivatives that's, you know, split up between the yeah. time value, the option value and the, rem you know, the remaining points and you're putting... Lovely stuff. Yeah, exa exactly, you know, <laughs> and half it's going to OCI and the other half it's going to God knows where. But, but you know, uh, so it can be really complicated like that or it can be pretty basic, right? It can be just this is the intercompany balance between the treasury entity and whatever, and this is the accrued interest, you know? So the, the important thing is that it flows and it happens and it works easily for the accounting team, really, uh, on, on the far side, because the last thing we need to do is create any sort of friction between treasury and accounting, because what we're doing is making their job harder. So so one of our selling points is also, look, from an accounting perspective, we'll make this a lot, uh, a lot easier for you. The last sort of system is obviously the, the netting system that we use. So again, we use the 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 brand leader, I suppose, in reality, uh, globally from from a netting um, from a netting perspective, uh, and uh, we integrate that both with um, the TMS uh, to get any kind of intercompany netting flows that might be that might be coming up, and then importantly, we help all of our clients to integrate either with a centralized ERP environment, you know, so if they have AP and AOR on a global basis, great. Uh, but again, more often than not, we have a mixture between kind of centralized and then localized. Uh, uh, localized uploads of, of voices and the likes. So that's kind of it's fair to use you lads if you if you caught all that because it was a lot, <laughs> a lot, yeah, 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 yeah. A lot three minutes. So, and that's good. That's good. I well, think you laid out the pillars of a good treasury uh, organization essentially. So I think that was really interesting. And mm -hmm. um, to it, you so because there was I, I as I understand it, I guess there's two ways in which you work with companies then, right? There's the way in which and um, maybe they have a very basic treasury operation at the moment. It's just some light on Excel. Um, or indeed, they, they have a, um, a a huge growth phase, like an acquisition or something like this, that requires all of a sudden a proper treasury infrastructure. In that case, they can just tap into your systems. Right. It's kind of the flow of information, data, and executions is everything's coming through their ERP. It goes out into your systems, and then comes back into their system already managed, right? Correct. That's one setup. And in that sense, you're using all of the systems that you just mentioned there. 
The other setup is where there is an existing treasury team, there's an existing a treasury operation, uh, maybe there's a new group treasurer that came in and says, hey, look, we need to start outsourcing some of this stuff so that we can um, do it at scale, We can it can be done better, we're not doing netting, we should get someone to do netting or, or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, something like this. Yeah. And in which case there is treasury infrastructure already in place inside yeah. the company and then you're kind of coming in on top. In that setup, I guess it's a bit of a match between what of their systems you use and what of your system you use. Do you just get access to their software? It's like, how does that... Yeah, like if, if, if required, we get access to their software. But, but generally speaking, uh, if there is any kind of integration, we try to automate it. Um, so generally speaking, you know, if there is a requirement, for instance... Uh, to use their treasury management system or for them to have a full treasury database. We may still use our treasury management system, but then extract a file, which will be directly um, uploaded into there. So do, do, you see, do, you, do you see what I mean? Okay. So there's, there's kind of ways and means um, around it. You'd rather do that. You'd rather keep your system and run it with that because I guess you're experts. Co and correct. And, and, and it's fully, the environment is fully integrated to, to be honest with you, Sammy. You, you know, so, 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 you know, we're trying to, I suppose we're trying to get efficiencies where possible. Um, another thing I, I didn't mention, just to just to kind of bring it into the fore as well, is that we have a we have a really significant uh, uh, RPA suite in place. So so robotic process automation um, uh, in place, whereby we are uh, using that to uh, uh, undertake nearly all of our cross application processes, if that makes sense. So. So, so now when our dealing team comes in in the morning, all of the information that they need from a cash positioning um, perspective is already there, right? So our robots have gone off, they've got all the statements, uh, they've integrated them into a system, they've gone to the treasury management system, uh, they'll have put that all into the relevant database, uh, it'll kind of got currency rates, it'll kind of tell you what's maturing, do you, do you know what I mean? So, so, so and, and, and we're methodically going through all of our um, processes mm -hmm. To try to do that because yeah. because to be to, 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 to be blunt about it, we have people here who are quite skilled and, and the last thing yeah. we kind of need them doing is opening spreadsheets and walking yeah and exa out. exactly so that's something that we've really invested heavily in it also was a massive risk reduction you know there's no fat finger risk um uh coming yeah. into play so so it, it, you know we, it has multiple uh multiple benefits uh uh, and it also has a business benefit to be blunt in that you don't need as much resource um, to be able to undertake undertake the process. Just an uh, automation boutique is one of our sponsors. That's right. right. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Line is as well as yeah, uh, exactly. RPA automation for companies. Exactly. And uh, yeah, some of the stuff that they're doing is great in terms of, uh, as you say, eliminating the risk and uh, uh, bringing in a kind of a, a more streamlined uh, process. Justin, how does it, because I, I'm, I'm, I keep asking myself this question and maybe some people in the industry will as well. If you use your own system, it means the cash at some point needs to move from the client system or the information needs to move from the client system to your system to then go back to the client system. But so to take a very practical example to understand how it works, if we take the netting part, for instance, yeah. what does it mean that you aggregate, do you create one instance per client yeah. within your netting system? Or do you say, okay, and that's one of the other questions we want to ask you, we integrate it into the pool of the other clients data and then we net everything so that's major benefits obviously but then you mix everybody or yeah. how does it work now we, we 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 definitely do not do the latter which is the mixing of everybody okay that's, that's just that's which just, would make sense just a big no-no um to be to, to okay be blunt. there is no commingling of financial yeah. assets at all just to be just to be clear every oh, okay. every client is very much ring fenced and bucketed within their own legally owned systems databases and bank accounts you know and they're nothing to do mm -hmm. with us they are theirs 100 percent. all we are doing is providing an infrastructure and a resource to undertake particular no. uh, particular 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 process so for instance when we onboard a new let, let, let's just stick with netting because it's, it's easy right uh, well maybe yeah. it's not easy i shouldn't say that should I? <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> when we onboard a new netting client we will go out to our uh, netting software provider and get a new netting database for that client it, it, oh, okay. you know do you know do, 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 do you know what i mean and it is specifically for that client the login will be whatever at the client's name you know um it's it's a specific defined database all of the information flow that goes in there um uh will come from client data sources uh be them erp manual uh, other invoice systems what, whatever 
uh, and it will only be those clients' data sources. And the net values will only be the net values of that client. The net values will be trade. Sometimes they're traded cash. Sometimes they're done across you know intercompany accounts. So we can do it either way. If they are traded in cash, the trades are done with their clients, counterparty banks, in that client's name. You know execution on behalf of, uh, and then they are settled across that client's bank accounts. So you know it's very much ring fenced, no commingling. Uh, we are just providing an infrastructure and and a resource to get certain um, processes done. And it's important. It's a good question because it's important that people would sort of understand mm. that. No, no, hundred percent. Take us into um, how you like, like. I guess let's stick to the netting example of outsourcing, right? So let's go all the way through to uh, netting uh, outsourcing. A company comes to you and say, yeah. "Corporate Treasury One One is coming to you and saying, hey, Justin, yeah. uh, we're getting mahusive with all of our sponsors <laughs> and our relationships, and we need to start uh, intercompany netting yeah. because we have an entity in different places as well yeah. and everything like that. Um, and so tell me what happens internally for you. Do you guys have like a netting expert that is across different clients? Or if I also need netting and I need some FX, I need some um, other operations, do I just get my own FTE out of uh, FTI? No, we, 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 we certainly have experts. Do I get the entire team? Exactly. We have experts in in particular areas, and, and we do. We do have a netting expert, right? But they will manage the netting process, right? But they don't manage everything to do with it, and that's that's pretty fundamental because any, any of the processes that we undertake are subject to the normal segregation that you would expect within um, a treasury treasury operation. So whilst all of our clients will have a main contact, um, okay. that main contact certainly will not do all of the things for a client, if that if that makes sense. No. Um, so you you I mean you make a good point, right? Netting, right? Um, uh, like for instance, if you're if you're going to cash settle netting, um, you need to actually execute FX deals. So net, now you're not just doing netting, right? You're also needing to have access to FX all and probably a treasury management system. You're probably also going to need access to um, uh, banking systems in order to settle out the netting. Okay, so yeah. so you know you say let's just do a bit of netting. It's a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more complicated <laughs> than that. Now, having said that, right, we we do have clients who would undertake netting, but then just settle it all on a non-cash basis. So if you think about it, they'll just settle it all across intercompany accounts. You know, create a debit and a credit on a ledger, and instead of having you know, a, a receivable to Spain and an owable from Germany and a receivable from the USD. You'll just have a single, you know, you just have a single balance with either an in-house bank or some kind of entity, which is, it's a, it's a very clean way of managing uh, netting and, and much less complex because now you've removed all of the requirement for, um, you know, FX dealing, cash settlement, bank uh, uh, integration and all, and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, we are, you mentioned before that we're plug and play. We are plug and play, right? But Everything we do is customized for each client. So not, yep. nothing is the exact same, to be, to be blunt. It all looks a little bit similar, uh, you know, and, and, and we obviously have economies of scale and benefits of knowing what we do, but none of it's the exact same because everybody has a slightly different system requirement, slightly different information flow, uh, maybe keen on non-cash versus cash. You know, it's all just that little bit, uh, that, that, little, that little bit different. So, um, you know, I suppose, you, you ask, like, take us through, how does it look? Let's say, for instance, with netting. Like, 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 like the first thing we need to sit down with a client to do is define what they actually want. You, you know, um, like, okay, you you want netting and that's fine, but how do you want that to result? Do you, do you, do you know what I mean? Um, and how do you want that what to do you, look? Why do you want netting? E exactly, exactly. Uh, the other thing we would generally do, just to stick with netting, for instance, is we would look for some of the uh, data on the intercompany flows, which will allow us to define what the likely benefits, financial, um, of netting are. I ha have to say that when, when we implement netting uh, solutions with clients, generally the financial benefits is what starts, but it's all the other benefits that accrue after that, that they sort of go, oh, geez, this is great. We're, we're centralizing all our cash flows to one sort of day in the month. Uh, we've totally cleaned up our deflated our balance sheet because you don't have a million and one intercompany balances you know so so it's funny they are often the things that, that lead through so so defining you know that sort of data flow is is really uh really important uh and then from there what we generally do is you know we'll commission the uh, the database from the from the software um software provider and then we start working with uh the it uh team of the of the client to see how they want to get the ap and a or data in in 
and importantly out because there's two elements to it right anything that's you, you need to get information in so that it can get netted and settled and then you need to get information out so that it can get cash allocated effectively across back the across the across the erp so so once we've done that then uh we generally move into kind of uh user training um perspective because netting is a netting is a funny beast in that you know unlike a lot of treasury stuff like you know if we're, if we're managing um uh, liquidity systems and stuff like that you, you can kind of do it in isolation a little bit just with just within the treasury team whereas netting is really it's a it's a business touch point right so all of the subsidiaries around the business are going to see it uh that's great in many ways because it gives treasury a a, a, a a good kind of stage to to show off what it's what it's able to do uh but it's also a risk right because you need to do it right um because you don't want to get egg in your face across the whole the whole the whole, um, the whole company <laughs> so 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 we we would generally manage a, a range of kind of training sessions uh normally we're doing this in global companies so we, we try to do kind of them across the uh across the time zones over a couple of weeks uh, which makes people feel comfortable you know they know what's going to happen generally speaking if they're coming from a an environment where they're not doing netting and um, uh, what we try to promote is the workload benefit of this right you know you're gonna have no more wrecks uh you know what i mean you're gonna have you're gonna have all these things settled out uh you're gonna deflate your balance sheet etc etc and um, uh, and then uh effectively uh, we move into the live into the live environment uh and we run through the netting process i mean we have a very well defined manual what we refer to as a manual which lays out kind of the, all the steps of each netting cycle um but it's a it's a very smooth process once you kind of get up and running and people people generally become very comfortable with it within one to two cycles um our clients in general would would run a netting cycle every month that's the sort of general we've we've done a good few that run a netting cycle every you know twice a month and then we have a handful that you know do it really frequently maybe every five days sometimes that's uh, if they have a really high volume of intercompany trade that is creating FX noise. They want to clear that off the balance sheet as quick as possible. Do you, do you, do you know what I mean? So, so that would kind of drive uh, some of the frequency. So, so it is interesting. People use netting for different end purposes. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, an, it's, it's, an, it's always interesting to see why and to understand why a client wants to do that. And so what's the, can you, I mean, if I'm, because there'll be treasurers listening to this right now. So what, effort is it for me as a treasurer? So what do I need to give you, Justin, so that you can set up my energy? So like, list them off for me. If I want to set up netting today, what are the things that you're going to be taking my time to get done so that I can win my time back for? Yeah, that's that's a t- totally fair question. So 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 the key from a pure netting perspective, actually the treasury touch is really light um, because there's very little. Uh, there's there's no treasury touch point really. All, all, you, all you really need to do is get the AP and AOR, the, the intercompany AP and AOR information from wherever it might be an ERP system it might be locally input it might be a local accounting system whatever and we generally work with either the uh, centralized IT system or the local finance managers to do that so so that's potentially an effort for the on the client side but not necessarily the treasurer if that makes sense um uh, uh the, the the treasury elements come into it if we we need to do the FX dealing and we need to do the um, the settlement, right? So, so then, generally speaking, again, we manage most of the setup on the FX trading platform. So, generally speaking, all we need is an introduction to the uh, to the banking uh, partners, and as you can imagine, generally speaking, they already know us, right? So, it's not it's not kind of it's not new to them um, uh, because, as I said, there is there is a, that kind of concentration of banks that we generally that we generally deal with. Uh, so, that's reasonably straightforward. And then the other thing is we need to be set up as users on EB systems. Um, uh, and you know to have all that set up. That, that's really the bulk of the work, client side work. Uh, so it's it's quite uh, light. Would I not have to like uh, we we need to establish the uh, treasury policy for the netting system, right? We need to establish what are the controls, what is out of let, what's our risk appetite on it. I guess with netting, it's not really yeah, it's a, risk appetite, exactly. but there's the whole FX aspect yeah. of it, and um, like you mentioned there as well. So I mean, so generally there would be a lot of aligning on what are the for my company, what is my, I need to explain to you my business model, I need to explain to you all my subsidiaries, where they're set yeah. up, why they're set up like they are, et cetera, et cetera. We need to go through this whole process as well. For, for, if, we're, if we're taking on cash management, that's absolutely the case. Uh, if you're doing yeah. netting in isolation, not so not so much, you know, because okay. it's not really- It's just the bank account. Exactly, yeah. it's just kind of a, yeah. it's a it's a flow through, right? It should end up yeah. netting 
by definition should end up having no impact, right? <laughs> or there's something going to be wrong. <laughs> um, uh, but, but, but you're absolutely right. If, if we're looking after cash management and stuff like that, yeah, we need to agree risk parameters and stuff like that. But actually, to be honest, we normally would work that out in maybe an afternoon's workshop, something like that. We generally go visit our clients. Okay. We'll, we, we, we bring with us sort of a suggested approach. Do you know, do you, do you, do you, yeah. do you know what I mean? Uh, and then we would adopt as the that. treasury experts. Exactly. Well, I, well, it's just I would ask you to say what should I do, and it's not it's that. it's not necessarily what should. It's more look. This is kind of what we would generally do, and mm. and really like like the key things are like for instance, right? Some clients uh, would prefer to run a little bit of a higher currency exposure uh, because they don't want to execute more deals, right? Do, do you know? Do, do, do you know what I mean? Often the the differences are really subtle nuances. Um, you know, so we, we'd have clients that would have, for instance, you know, a, an FX tolerance of the equivalent of 100,000 US dollars. That's probably about as low as you're going to go because you're not going to really want to be doing deals for anything anything lower than that. Uh, but then we'd have other ones that would have, you know, 5 million, uh, you know, and, it, and it's really just understanding. And then, and then, and then obviously, you know, some people would say, well, I'm happy to have a 5 million euro exposure. But I don't want a five million ruble exposure, yeah, you know, or, or or whatever, you know. So, yeah. so it's working through those. I know, and as you say, like you can only work through them, right? Because they will be individual yeah. to a company. Uh, uh, you know, someone who has uh, significant operations in Mexico may be willing to have a significant exposure to me, to, to 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 Mexican peso, even though it could be volatile and the interest rates very high. You, you know, so courses for courses, uh, it's a matter of sitting down and working through. But it's not as complex as you might. Imagine, um, and in fact, we we seek to not make it that complex. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the saying? Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. You know, you know, it's a, uh, 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 you know, overcomplication just makes things difficult and potentially sort of increases risk. So we just sort of take we, we take that view and we take a very pragmatic approach, to be honest, to most of these things. Sounds great, amazing, Justin. I think we unfortunately have to bring this absolute masterpiece on treasury outsourcing to an end. <laughs> it's Anything only an like to... <laughs> <laughs> Just that. Any anything else you'd like to add on the different topics we touched upon? Anything we didn't discuss that you think might be uh, important or interesting to bring to our audience? I, I mean, like, like, like. Listen, guys, we, we've covered a lot there, right? <laughs> anybody, <laughs> anybody, anybody who makes it this far to, deserves a coffee. Um, <laughs> uh, no, look, listen, like, like uh, treasury outsourcing. If the one thing I would say about it is that um, uh, it kind of flies under the radar a little bit, um, you know, and. And it's a consideration that should be higher, probably, on people's agenda. Oh, just a consideration, right? Uh, uh, when when looking for solutions to particular problems, you know, thinking outside of the box can sometimes be a, a benefit, both both kind of financially and uh, from a process um, perspective. Uh, the other thing I'd say is that, like, if anybody is sort of considering looking at uh, any sort of any sort of solution like right really the key to it is to find people who've done it before right uh, and and talk talk to them that's the uh, because you, you can have people from the business itself can kind of tell you anything right and and outsource providers are very different in nature um so you need to kind of you know find find your fit let's put it that way uh, someone who can do what you need them to do uh, and 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 importantly remember this uh that like that, that really these people are going to be part of your team, right? So, you know, can you work with them? Uh, would, would you give them a job if they wanted to be part of your team? You know, um, uh, they're, they are kind of important, uh, important considerations. But, consideration. but really, I, I, at the end of the day, uh, I would suggest that uh, if people are in, I, interested in the topic, there's loads more resources on our website, fditreasury.com. Uh, and in addition to that, you know, if you're if if people are seriously kind of interested in discussion, obviously we're always open to help people. Even we talk to people all the time, just from a discussion point of view, and it doesn't ever come to anything. That's that's totally fine. Uh, and again, you know, reach out to your peers um, that have done this, uh, see what they feel. There's nothing better than a than a than a, a peer sort of a recommendation for anything in the treasury world. I think we probably all know that. You know, if you were looking for a, a good banking partner, you definitely pick up the phone. You, you know, if you're looking to put in place a new funding structure, you definitely pick up the phone. So why not do it for for these things as well? Absolutely amazing. So you named it fditreasury.com. Anything else? Um, if people want to know more about you or 
FDI Treasury? Yeah, well, look, there's, as I said, there's lots of lots of resources there on the web. Uh, we also have um, a chatbot there, so uh, feel free. But also my, my uh, personal email is there, and I'm always open, always interested to hear what's going on. Someone called me a treasury nerd once, which I, I'm not sure if that was a compliment or not. <laughs> it is. We <laughs> call that all the time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. 170 plus episodes of Corporate Treasury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're definitely treasury nerds yeah. as well. Don't well yeah, I didn't, help that I didn't want to say that, guys. <laughs> 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 we'll take it Justine thanks folks talk to you all soon <laughs>